Hey guys, welcome back to Pillbox Movies. I'm Hank, and today I am depressed out of my gourd. <laughs> but never mind that, because we're going to be watching the 1964 Iranian New Wave film, Brick and Mirror. Brick and Mirror has been a hard movie to find, to be quite honest, so I'm excited to have it on my hands, and sad that I'm seeing it in such a wretched state. Uh, the movie is about a cab driver who discovers a child in the backseat of his cab one night, and what he subsequently tries to do with it. So we've got a uh, a broker go a situation going on, or a Tokyo Godfathers. <laughs> yeah, sounds interesting enough. So yeah, let's watch Brick and Mirror. <laughs> Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Everything is fine. I really like the anonymity of the dark cabs. You can't see like the drivers or the um, passengers. Wow. I had no idea how expansive Tehran was back in the 60s. I love how dark the cityscape is in this. I mean, it's like a loss of information or whatever, but it's just a blanket of black. It's so pitch dark. And you can only, like, infer the uh, movement or the life that's going on in that darkness. Already really kind of active camera. I always make a note of this, but they're they're choosing to uh, swivel and pan the camera. And already the editing style is kind of um, active and a little bit more frenetic than in, you might expect it to be. <sighs> yeah, look at that. Oh, beautiful. What a what an exciting way to capture the magnitude of that staircase of those steps. Already you can kind of feel the um, urbanity infused into the editing, into the shooting style. Wow. So what could... Who could have been the culprit? What, what happened in this? I love these the, these low angles that they're choosing, just depicting like how expansive and oppressive the architecture is. And the use of negative space is so... It's so exciting. It's really interesting to see, like, such an expanse, such a deserted area after being flooded by all of those city lights. Oh, that's so beautiful, keeping her her veil, her shadow, um, illuminated as she walks away. Just like keeping that single spot, li lighting her her costume, lighting her. It's oh my gosh. Kind of like. Uh, the U.S. right now, she's telling a story of like speculative construction, just uh, uselessly building and building buildings, buildings without roofs, buildings without kitchens, without anything to sustain uh, human life or community within them, just building to have the bricks 
whether it be bricks, whether it be rubble, it's still just stone. It doesn't have the human element to it. It's so eerie that where he dropped off that woman, just a few miles out in the outskirts of the city, suddenly it's so empty. There's none of that same kind of population, that same kind of density that we see in these um, uh, downtown or central city scenes. Okay, I do think they're they're actually making a comment in this extended conversation that they're having that um part of the reason that they keep talking him in circles and preventing him from taking the child to the police and uh pose solutions to him and then question why he would be interested in those solutions is that they're idle, that this is a uh, table of, of intellectuals and, and the people are interested in engaging with the real world. Oh no. Is that what you want for it? For it to go to an orphanage? What's Taji doing there? Ah, the baby hasn't eaten yet. He really should support its head. Whatever. Hey, I'm not gonna. I'm sure the baby turned out fine. No reports in the news about the 1964 movie with an injured baby on set. It's really beautiful images of Tehran at night. Tehran at night. Just vestiges of lights glittering in the darkness. So, are those pictures of Hashish? Of, of, of Hashem? Did he used to be a bodybuilder? Um, something that I haven't spoken of previously. Um, I, I do understand the perspective, but I, I, I do want to reinforce that a lot of these characters kind of um, baseline attitude towards the baby is as a, a kind of like a social burden um they don't really think about the um it's they don't think about its safety or its uh its welfare and so a lot of their attitudes um despite the fact that they um censure <laughs> despite the fact that they uh, criticize the woman for abandoning the baby a lot of their attitudes similarly display disregard for the baby's welfare and think solely on its effect on them on their reputation on their safety or welfare you know perceived traps or whatnot <laughs> And so while we kind of treat it as like an assumed or correct attitude for them to display because this is a social burden that has been put upon them, the child is not their responsibility, uh, I think it's more reflective of the kind of attitude that um, that the director, that Golistan is trying to explore. Mm -hmm. 
in the parlor, the uh, intellectuals were more concerned with uh, telling stories or um, waxing poetical in the police station. They were more concerned with filling out paperwork and uh, fulfilling bureaucratic duties. I kind of like, um, this is only displayed in a few other instances, so I, I may be plucking it out based on my unfamiliarity with um, Iranian or Persian. Um, but uh, there's a kind of a lyrical quality to the way that some of the characters are speaking, the, the female characters I've noted, that they uh, kind of repeat themselves, that they have these refrains that are kind of comforting and um, soothing in their repetition. I love the stillness of this one master shot, this prolonged shot of just tending and caring for the baby, no editorializing whatsoever. It's just like, um, it's kind of peaceful in a way. It's a moment of, of process, of, of chore, of, I don't know, simple process, simple pleasure of feeding and caring for another human being. Taiji and the and the baby are like slowly wearing down Hashem and all this kind of um, defensiveness and uh, curtness is being slowly broken down and even like he's re removing his layers and like just like they're they're breaking down their barriers and taking care of another child provide er, pr uh, another uh, human life and providing raiment for them clothing them, comforting them, caring for them. It's wonderfully humanistic kind of scene. Mm -hmm. His constant fear and uh, his paranoia about his neighbors, about his community, all eyes being on him, that he's being judged, that he's being um, constantly surveyed. It's a very kind of urban anxiety. All of his photos are of himself glorifying himself, glorifying his power, his masculinity, his uh, corporealness. And despite all of that power, he, he's still so scared, so uh, paranoid that he can't even turn his attention to a needful infant. <laughs> Yeah, you kind of get a sense of uh, Hashem as a bit of like a alarmist that he he's like constantly stockpiling things. He's worried about losing out on resources and stuff, and that's quite understandable, I'm sure, given his economic status, being a taxi driver and whatnot. But um, for whatever reason, perhaps living in the city, perhaps another, uh, perhaps um, a state of. Um, or the Iranian polity in the 60s, I have no, no idea, but um, he seems to represent a certain kind of timidity or fretfulness about life, about um, de depletion of resources, about uh, his own material conditions. Hmm. That's kind of sad. This is what modern day relationships are like. 
Golestan had it right in the 60s. Baby, have a little what, what, what does he want in his relationship with her? <laughs> what does he want out of this relationship? Oh my gosh. I was really expecting this to kind of center Hashem's story a bit more. It's it's revealing itself progressively to be more about Taji and her kind of lived experience. We're not allowed a lot of access into Taji's kind of inner life or his worldview, or at least what we see isn't uh, really that, <laughs> that sympathetic. You have it. It's in your hands right now. Oh, that's sad. This is some kind of insanity. Almost in um yeah the, the the kind of scenes the way they kind of rotate in and out of these characters' dreams and nightmares, it's it has this kind of lyrical quality to it, kind of like uh you know coursing down the river and or up the river I suppose in uh, Apocalypse Now. You view all these characters in a kind of state of frenzy at their most insane, and their worldviews are distilled oh, to no. their most brilliant form, their most ecstatic, and their most sorrowful, and their most outrageous. <laughs> Yeah, again, just like um, a casual disregard for human life, and it's human life on a spectrum, not just the um, binary of human life and death, but uh, human suffering, human, um, human value, human <laughs> hopes and dreams and aspirations. And we're kind of coursing through different kind of institutions of, of power or bureaucracy. And then we go from like the cafe to the police station to the hospital and now to the courts. And seeing this kind of system that he has to navigate in order to um, give shelter or to give care for this child. Yeah, all of this is nonsense, is endless bureaucracy.
these institutions that do nothing. And again, he faces the perilous steps that he faced in the uh, beginning of his adventure. God, such huge, overwhelming, oppressive architecture. Just these buildings squashing these human beings down into nothing. She was happy that they would have this child together. Oh, God. It's an interesting kind of experience. You obviously don't get it with a lot of kind of movies, but the experience that Taji had of the baby watching them make love was a moment of emotional intimacy and vulnerability for her that she felt like she was making love as herself for the first time. It's a weird, it's a weird connection to make, but um, at that moment she felt emotionally available and emotionally vulnerable, and sh that was her kind of identifying with the child and wanting to. Um, bring her into their um, into their circle to expand their bubble to encompass something more like a familial structure. It's a withering portrayal of, like, I guess, city life, but a life of isolation, of loneliness, of paranoia, of distrust, of alienation, even alienation from the people that you're most intimate with. Walking in separate frames. Yeah. yeah, he lives on speculation for tomorrow instead of living for what he has today. Obviously, he does, doesn't want the child, and Taji did, but apart from that, they live kind of different lifestyles where Hashem is very kind of, um, like, disaster-oriented. He's, uh, he, he catastrophizes. He imagines, like, the worst possible outcomes and kind of um, stays, like, conservative and closed off as a result. Uh, he remains on the defensive. He remains hypervigilant. <sighs> Listen, IRL, you can't be like reading too many symbols into the people in your lives. People aren't symbols, people act. And people act in the moment, and it's not necessarily a, a full display or a full premonition of how they'll act in the future. But I understand this life where you see somebody acting benevolently and you see your entire future with them. Go with her, Hashem. Hashem, turn your life around. You could do it. Hashem, I believe in you, Hashem. Man, I'm 
it's like a real moment of vulnerability and it's underplayed so beautifully it, who knows if the movie is playing to the direction that i uh, assumed that it was in that but like that was like just like a powerfully human moment played out in such smallness you don't get a sense that he's pitying her you don't get a sense that he's ameliorating her that he realizes in her vulnerability her moment of human display to him that he's not living a life that's fulfilling and he wants to live a fulfilling life and he wants to live it with her I'm too old. I have an extreme soft spot right now for movies where the ultimate lesson, the ultimate revelation is people realizing I want to start a family. <laughs> Which one even is it? Someone on the far right. Oh, was it just a fantasy? Come on. Please be able to tell. Come on. So many children, so many human lives that aren't given the proper care whether by the state whether by the health services whether by communities one way or the other all these human lives are being left by the wayside Girl, you're turning heel on me right now. You're not finding the same kind of human connection. You can't identify which is the right baby. Maybe it's not a comment on her personal psychology. Maybe it's a, a comment on the kind of overwhelmingness of the bureaucracy that there's just so many um, children flooding this ward that she can't even identify the one that she wanted to care for. I mean, an alternate viewpoint would be that all of these children are deserving of care. But I, I mean, like, I'm not going to go out of my way to judge a fictional character on not you know, properly displaying simp uh, empathy towards orphan babies. Look at all of these children in need of care. Malnourished. Born with disabilities. Or just more generally born without homes. All of these human possibilities. You can't take care of all of them. Just within your means, if you truly believe, Taji, if this is something that you really want, then do it. No. Oh, no, 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 no. 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 I mean, can you really blame her, I guess? You and I and every one of us have made a thousand decisions like this every day of our lives. The same kind of fear, the same kind of isolation, loneliness, paranoia that Hashem carries in his heart. Tachi carries it too. We carry it as well. And the one day of light that they have, the one morning, the one day, 
slowly descends back into the night, back into the few glittering lights in the sea of darkness. <clears throat> what is that, a sign for gu Guitar Center? Yeah, the, this state line of the golden rule of uh, respect and camaraderie, of caring for others. It's the stated values of the society, but the actionable values of the society display a, a culture that is hard, that is suspicious, that is uh, unsympathetic to other people's strife. So many people that aren't being helped or aren't being addressed to the degree that a civilized world or that a an affluent civil uh, affluent country should be able to. Instead of human beings and community, we have we have cars. We have cars and neon lights. Instead of wealth, we have prosperity. He's got to go on the job again. Got to pick up a fare. Instead of communities, we have traffic. No. <laughs> <laughs> phenomenal oh that was phenomenal that baby disappears into the system Taji disappears into that hospital Hashem disappears into the traffic of the city for all the um, intellectualizing and uh, uh, grandstanding and uh, speechifying there is in the first three quarters of this film for the last part of it the last section of it to play out so wordlessly it's just beautiful it's a really good film i think one of the better ones that i've seen in quite a while i there there's like no way to find this film but hopefully uh, uh the uh restoration uh gets another theatrical release sometime soon and uh hopefully there's a physical media release of it in the future <laughs> I, I wanted to expound further on uh postulations as to what this movie's deeper meaning is read up a little bit on the history of iran during this time the white uh, the White Revolution, the uh, Iran Iranian Revolution. I may add that in later. Um, for now, though, I want to take a step back and, yeah, 
really appreciate. This was a really good film. Um, yeah. Find it if you can. Check out World Cinema. Find human stories. Find human stories. Stories that are about recognizing the humanity of others. Watch a movie that was made with love. And until next time. <clears throat> and until next time. Keep watching good movies.